JWST has imaged a bizarre looking object. It's a bright star, seemingly surrounded by concentric rings. It also has bright diffraction spikes too, caused by the way the light enters the telescope itself. These spikes aren't a real part of the object, they're just an artifact caused by the mirrors and the struts on board JWST. But the strange rings around the star aren't just some artifact from the instrument. They're produced very differently and they're very real. This is the star WR140, a pretty bright star in the Northern Hemisphere, and it has a knack for producing a lot of cosmic dust. It's actually a binary star system, and the interactions between the two stars are one of the causes of the strange rings around the star here. I think, like most people, when I first saw this image, I assumed that the rings, just like the diffraction spikes, were caused by some weird interaction or noise in the telescope and they might go away as more data was taken or by better image processing. It turns out though, these rings are very real and they actually are there in space, hanging out around the star, emitting light in the infrared wavelengths that Webb can see. And in particular, Webb's MIRI instrument was used here to take this data. This means that we're looking at mid-infrared light, the longest wavelength of light that JWST can see, and it's perfect for seeing dust and gas. As far as I can tell, this is the very first time we've seen these shells of outward moving dust. So it's a really exciting image to come out of Webb. If you want a sense of scale here, the total distance across the visible rings is approximately 1.4 trillion kilometers, or 150 times the Sun-Neptune distance. So that's pretty big. The big question here then is why are there rings around this particular star? I mean, most stars don't have this, so why does this one? Well, it's to do with how hot and how much fuel the star is burning, as well as its interactions with its companion star in the binary system. WR140 is a type of star known as a Wolf-Rayat star, hence the WR in its name, which are characterized by being extremely hot, usually over 30,000 Kelvin, extremely bright, usually over 100 times brighter than our sun, and produce extremely powerful winds from their surfaces, sometimes winds up to around 3,000 kilometers per second. All of this adds up to the perfect conditions for producing lots of cosmic dust. And that's exactly why JWST has been looking at this star as part of a project to study the origins of cosmic dust. The team leading this project have a paper currently in peer review all about these observations. So I'll bring any interesting updates when the paper is out. And until then, we have all of these amazing images produced by citizen scientists from the public JWST data. When we say dust in this context, we really just mean any particles and bits of matter blown off from the star. So it could be hydrogen, helium, carbon, and a mix of heavier elements too. The current best theory for the origin of the rings around the star is as follows, or at least these are the key steps in the process, but I'm sure there are more complicated processes involved at every step along the way. WR140 is nearing the end of its life and it's run out of hydrogen to fuse into helium. And this results in less outward radiation pressure coming from the core of the star. This means that in the eternal battle between gravity and pressure, which usually balance to hold up the star, gravity starts to be more powerful and the star compresses just a bit shrinking its volume. As this happens though, the pressure inside is raised and it becomes possible for some of the helium in the star to start fusing together. This provides an increase in the outward radiation pressure and the balance is restored, so the star stops shrinking. However, during this process, the surface of the star tends to lose more pressure than the core. And when the outwards radiation then increases, lots of matter tends to get blown off of the star into the surrounding space. Essentially, we end up with a very powerful pulsing solar wind. The process here then continues, repeating and causing cycles of dust emission. The gaps between the rings correspond to the time between cycles, and we can see that it's an incredibly stable cycle. WR140's companion also contributes to the process. You see, it's a massive O-type star that also produces very powerful outward winds from its surface, and it's gonna be creating a lot of cosmic dust of its own. These two stars then orbit each other on elliptical paths, and when they reach their closest approach every 7.94 years, the two solar winds collide, smashing together the dust carried by each wind. These collisions cause shock waves throughout the dust and also energize it, causing it to glow even brighter in the infrared wavelengths that we can see here. 
All of this means we call the system a colliding wind binary, and on each approach, the infrared emission from the dust increases dramatically. We don't really see complete rings here around the star, likely because the rings are only produced visibly when the two stars are closest together, and not during the complete orbit of WR140. We can see about 20 rings here if you count them by eye, so if our best guess of an orbital period of 7.94 years is correct, then it only took around 160 years for this entire structure to form. That's very quick, astronomically speaking. Soon though, life will catch up with these hot, massive stars and they're gonna burn out, ending the creation of this incredible system. I hope you enjoyed this quick look at a fascinating image from JWST. Please subscribe if you're new for more videos like this and leave any questions and comments you have down below. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon, bye.